So we'll, we'll start with daylighting now, lighting, basically illumination design. And if you look at it, this we might have talked about somewhat earlier. Uh, the total electromagnetic spectrum, if you look at it, a little bit of introduction to light, that's what we'll talk about in the beginning. Uh, illumination uh, related units, because they are different units, and first we'll talk about that. Then we go to uh, daylighting design and things like that. So if you see electromagnetic spectrum, uh, the wavelengths are given here. Obviously, frequency will be smallest here. Wavelength is maximum, you know, minimum here 10 to the power minus 15. And this side is 10 to the power 5 shows in terms of meter, so wavelength. So this is cosmic radiation is the, you know, smallest wavelength, highest, because they come from far off, so high energy stuff. Then your gamma rays, X rays, ultraviolet, and there is a small bend of visible light, right? Going from something like about 370 or so uh, nanometer to around 760 nanometer or seven, you know, close to 800 nanometer. That's the visible light. Then you have got infrared radiation, which we talked about earlier, the heat radiations, heat radiations, right? Then, of course, radar, ultra high frequency, very high frequency, short wave, radio waves, etc., etc. So, this is a small band which is visible light, which is visible light. And uh, uh, sun's rays con contains this in sufficient quantity, and therefore, you know, we can make use of sun's radiation for lighting or for visual, visual uh, mm, mm, comfort or visual performance, etc. Now, they need different units. Why? Because the quantity of energy is very small. Quantity of energy is very small. We can't use watts. Watt is too large a quantity for illumination. So, illumination, you know, related to illumination, uh, units are different. Now, first we look at intensity. That's the fundamental unit actually. Now, what is intensity? Intensity that we have seen was for radiation, it was watt per meter square. Energy density, power density. Similarly, in case of sound also we have seen it was watt per meter square, we talked in terms of watt per meter square, right? So that's power density. Here we talk in terms of intensity, we call it candela. In SI unit, we call it candela, right? So we denote it generally by I. I is the intensity and is the amount of energy candela, that is can candela. So, one candela is the light emitted by 1 by 60 square centimeters, uniformly emitting black body at the melting point temperature of platinum. So, everything else have been fixed. The temperature at which it is emitted is fixed, right? And size of the element is also fixed. So, amount of light energy emitted from 1 by 60 square centimeter uniformly emitting, that means it is almost like a point source emitting in all direction, black body at melting point temperature of platinum close to, uh, the frequency is fixed actually, the wavelength is fixed is close to a yellow light or whatever it is, whatever particular nanometer, 550 nanometer perhaps. So, that amount of light is called 1 candela, one candela, one candela, right? And then one candela, so therefore this in intensity is associated with source. Remember we to when we talked of sound field, we talked of intensity of the field. For source we talked of power level, right? Here the intensity per unit area emitted, intensity is the, you know, the energy emitted total energy emitted from in all direction from a source that we are calling as one candela, right? So, how much it would be if I want to find out because it is going in all direction, that is what by definition, right? Uniformly emitting in all direction, so it is very small it's a point source going in all direction. Now, the density, I, if I want to find out density, then 
I must divide it by area or something of that similar kind, but here we do not divide by area because area is too small, right? Area is too small, so if we divide by area, it becomes it will become very large. Point source, what is the area? So, what we do instead, we divide it by solid angle per unit solid angle. So, you know, so or the light that is passing through unit solid angle, right? So, we talk in terms of flux then, we talk in terms of flux and the amount of energy emitted through unit solid angle, we talk in terms of energy emitted through unit solid angle. For one candela source, the light energy emitted through one stair radian, you know, you remember we talked of solid angle earlier. So, 4 pi stair radian is the solid angle subtended at a point, you know, in all direction of spherical front going on. So, one candela source, the amount of energy passing through unit solid angle, we call it 1 lumen or flux, you know, it is 1 lumen, it is 1 lumen denoted by L m this is denoted by candela. So, 1 lumen. So, 1 lumen is nothing, but if I have a 1 candela source, the light energy that passes through unit solid angle from such a source. Now, a point source actually subtends 4 pi stair radian. Therefore, a point source will emit 4 pi lumen. Is this point all right? The 1 candela, I have a 1 candela source, I take you know this is the area anyway, this is the area, this is the area. So, this is let us say d a divided by r square. Remember we talked in terms of d omega will be equals to d a by r square when this equals to 1, 1 solid angle and if my source is 1 candela, then the light that is passing through unit solid angle that I call as 1 lumen or unit of flux unit of flux, right. So, this is denoted usually by f, flux is usually denoted by f and flux, how many flux will then come from one candela source in total 4 pi lumen, because through I'm, by definition I am saying whatever energy comes through unit solid angle that is 1 lumen. Since it subtends 4 pi stair radians, so it will be 4 pi lumen. 4 pi lumen. So, that is definition of lumen or unit, you know that unit and just compare this with watts 1 lumen is equals to 1 by 680 lumen, you know sorry 680 watts 1 by 680 watts. Now, this were earlier in FPS system. So, you find that you know coming y 680 y 1 by 60 centimeter square centimeter because uh, they came from they actually came from FPS system foot candela etcetera etcetera, but whatever it is. So, this is what it is. So, 1 lumen is equals to 1 by 680 watts at 550 nanometer, 550 nanometer uh, wavelength of light, wavelength of light, right. So, that is how we define flux. So, f is equals to actually i into omega. If i is the intensity, for a point source 4 pi i will go in all direction, but through a omega solid angle it will be i into omega right. F flux flux through omega solid angle for a i intensity source is f equals to i omega, because by definition I am saying f is that energy that is going through one solid angle one solid angle all right one solid angle right. So, that is the whole idea. Illumination units are much smaller that you can see. That is why you are using separate separate units, not using watts anymore. So, we are using you know flux and I. So, illumination is defined. Now, this is you see this is this is for source. I was for source. Flux is also for source, but flux also links the receiver in the sense that I have a source from the source light energy comes out, but to see something say for example, if it is a task you know working plane or your paper where you are writing or reading from that is also acts as a source for the eye, because light is reflecting from there and that is why you are. So, the amount 
it will reflect is very important. How much it is receiving and how much it will reflect, that's very important. So finally, how much the uh, how much the paper or your book or what we call task plane, working plane, receives, that's very important, or emits, that's very important. So illumination we define with respect to a receiver which acts like a source. See, the source can be the light, but the light has to come on top of something and reflect for me to see. So the amount of light received on this one and then reflected back to my eye, that's important. So flux is with respect to source, but flux is received on a working plane or task plane. On the task, you know, task, for example, if you are doing watch repair on a table, this flux is received on this one. And how much of it comes to my eye, that would be governed by the reflectivity of that one. Let's for the time being take it out as one. Take that reflectivity as one. So the, the energy that is received on this surface or energy density there is important. And that energy density is called illumination. So illumination is defined. It's given by E, right? And it is one lumen per meter square received on the receiving surface which will act like a source for the eye, which will, for example, it's a blackboard or a board or the screen. Lumen will be received there, but lumen received per unit area is important because that would power, it will tell me how easily I am able to see or how easily I am not able to see. That is related to, you know, my, my uh, ease of seeing will be dependent on this value of E. So E is defined as is the illumination, it is defined in terms of lumen per meter square. So it is actually the link between the source and the receiving surface. And then finally to the eye of course. So it is a flux per unit area incident, you know, flux incident on one unit area. So you can see that, okay, so this one, we can link this up. We of course will link it up in a minute, uh, but let us, so the characteristics of a source again is important. I took point source, but sources are not necessarily point here, because if you have a lamp, it is it's, 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 you know, it's projected surface. If you consider a lamp, it is projected surface area. For example, if this is, let us say it is a table lamp or something of this kind, right? Here you have got the, you know, something like this, the bulb. So this, this portion, this portion. Through this actually light will be emitting, right? It might be emitting like this through this zone, it might be emitting through this zone, more direct through this zone and something indirect through this zone. You know, lamp, table lamp or something like that, a fitting, lamp and the fitting. Now you see this dimension should be of the order of around 200 mm, 250 mm. And you might be reading at a distance of let us say half a meter or one meter or even less, right? So this size is comparable to this distance. This might be your task plane or reading table, table. So these distances are not very large compared to the dimension. That means it will not be six times the dimension. You, you may not be able to treat them as point source all the time, unlike my earlier cases. So I might be, and how much, you know, I might be interested in the power of this source as well. So we talk of brightness of the source. This projected area is what I see. Projected area is the one which is responsible for passing the light. Because through this projected area finally, which will be elliptical in shape or maybe circular in shape, which will be a bright surface, which, will, which causes light to be received here. Because light from here, direct light will come like this, direct light from the lamp will come like this, but there will be a lot of reflected light coming. And the last point, you know, reflected light coming from this side because some light will come and go like this. So a lot of reflected light will come from the luminary, as we call it, or the, you know, the shade, lamp shade or whatever you call it, fitting. So it comes, reflected light comes from there. So therefore, this will act as a, it will appear as a bright surface to me, the circular bright surface, circular bright surface. So brightness is defined in terms of intensity per unit area and that is for a source. 
for a task plane or my object which I want to see, it is lumen per meter square on which my seeing will be ability to see will depend, right? Ability to see, I mean, if you are working on a corridor and it is absolutely dark, then you can't, you might fall or something like that. Now, that would depend upon illumination level there, lumen per meter square. But it must be coming from a lamp or some portion of the sky. So, if it comes from the lamp, the lamp surface, projected surface of the lamp fitting, that will actually contribute and that capability of that one I judge in terms of its brightness. So, brightness is defined in terms of candela per meter square. So, brightness is defined in terms of candela per meter square. So, brightness is a characteristic of the source. It is candela emitted per unit projected area actually. So, it is in terms of candela per meter square and there is another unit called apostille, I will just come to that in a minute. So, candela per meter square is the brightness of the source. So, what will be the brightness of the source of a lamp? Let us say the table lamp that I was talking about. The candela that it emits divided by the projected area of the fitting, projected area of the fitting, projected. Now, for a you know, diffused spherical lamp, you know, you have those globes you see in decorative places in the garden or something of that kind. What will be the projected area? Pi r square. Projected area is pi r square. So, candela, when I want to find out the brightness, it will be the intensity of that source divided by pi r square r. Is a, so, that is the brightness. But then, that is the brightness of the source. But for my eye, what is the source? It is the object itself. For example, the blackboard the paper. Therefore, I must have a way to talk about the brightness of such sources from where light comes to the eyes. So, another unit is used which is called apostille, which is called you know apostille, which is called apostille generally denoted by ASB, ASB and is the brightness of a perfectly, perfectly reflecting. That means, if the reflectivity is 1 of a surface which is not a source, is not generating light, it is receiving light and transmitting it to the eye or surrounding. So, such a surface, its brightness if I want to exp express, for example, the working task, task plane object or even surface of a building. From daylight point of view, sun's light reaches to one of the building surface and then reflected back to into the room. It can be reflected back into the room through the window. So, next building it might. Now, then the surface it is receiving light from a source. It is itself it is, is not creating light itself, but it is acting like a source for the room. So, for such surfaces we talk in terms of another brightness unit called apostille and it is defined as the brightness of a perfectly reflecting that means, reflectivity is 1 whatever it receives gives out, but gives out in all direction completely diffusing. What is diffusing? We talked in terms of acoustic sound that is diffusing. So, it will be going in all direction, it will be going in all direction. Normally, the mirror they have specular reflection, ray incident ray and then reflected ray, angle of incidence is equals to angle of reflection. But a rough you know, surface with lot of undulation, something like a, a not so polished table top, it will tend to direct the light in all direction. So, that is diffused reflection, right. So, it has to be perfectly diffusing and surface and if its illumination is 1 lux, then its brightness we call as 1 apostille. So, it is linked to the its illumination level. So, we are talking in terms of surface which will be reflecting. So, that is one apostille and actually the one apostille is related to one candela per meter square, you know it is related one by pi candela per meter square. One apostille is because how? Let us see if I have something to tell you about that. Supposing I have a small sphere, 
ok just draw a small sphere illuminated by 1 lux small sphere light coming from all sides equally in a diffused field and this is illuminated with 1 lux this is illuminated with 1 lux right. So, how much is the flux coming into it if its radius is r surface area is 4 pi r square right. So, how much is the flux? How did you define flux lumen? Lumen per meter square is E, which is 1 lakhs. So, 1, 1 is equals to F, the flux coming divided by 4 pi r square. If R is a radius of that small point source sort of thing, it is very small point source illuminated with 1 lakhs. So, that is the flux coming in. And if it is reflecting, if it is reflecting 100 percent, then the flux going out will be same, flux going out will be same, flux going out will be same. So, f by 4 pi r square will be reflecting back, you know reflected amount will be also, reflected amount will be also, reflected amount will also be, reflected amount also will be f you know by 4 pi r square, right. So, it is supposed to reflect everything. So, again it would be 1 divided by 4 pi r square right that is a that is a uh, that is a flux I am talking of because illumination sorry 1 was equals to f divided by 4 pi r square. So, 4 pi r square is a flux 4 pi r square is a flux right that must have been coming to this one. So, brightness we define in terms of candela per meter square. 1 apostille means this is equals to 1. 1 apostille means 4 pi, pi r square flux must have come onto it, right. And uh, uh, we define intensity as, uh, intensity how do you define? Intensity I define as f is equals to f into 4 pi, because it is coming from all sides is coming from all sides. So, f was equals to i omega if you recollect f was equals to i omega. So, the corresponding intensity is equals to i into 4 pi right. So, intensity is nothing but i i that is you know is equals to pi you know it is simply r square i is simply r square. Now, through which area it is going out because i divided by the projected area is candela per meter square. So, candela per meter square will be this divided by pi r square. So, pi r square. So, 1 by pi, 1 by pi, that is how it comes, you know. So, 1 by pi candela per meter square, 1 by pi candela per So, 1 apostle is equals to 1 by pi candela per meter square, uh, you know. It, it's, it, I, I just repeat this. What I am saying is 1 lux is a, 1 lux is a illumination at the surface of this sphere, small sphere. So, if 1 lux is the illumination, it must be reflecting, it must be you know 1 lux is the illumination, it must be receive, receiving 1 divided by 4 pi r square flux, right and must be reflecting the same. So, therefore, whatever it must be emitting 1 by 4 pi r square must have been getting the same. So, the flux is 1 by 4 pi r square and flux is equals to i into omega sorry not flux, flux is equals to 4 pi r square, flux is equals to 4 pi r square, flux divided by 4 pi r square is equals to 1. So, flux is equals to 4 pi r square and this was coming through i into 4 pi. So, intensity is nothing but r square and intensity divided by the projected surface area which is pi r square. So, candela per meter square candela i candela divided by pi r square. So, this will be 1 by pi candela per meter square and this is written here, this is written exactly here. Consider a sphere illuminated with 1 lux, its brightness is 1 apostle. Flux received is 4 pi r square for perfectly reflecting and diffusing source for flux emitted is same thus intensity through 4, 4 pi solid angle is r square candela. 
So, brightness is r square by 4 pi r, you know, r square by pi r square, 1 by pi scandalous pass parameter. That is the derivation of this idea. So, we use whenever we are talking of the object that I am viewing, I talk in terms of brightness in apostille quite often. And if I have to convert it to candela per meter square, then I use this relationship. And if it is a so source like light lamp or something like that, I might still use the intensity. But generally, it is a flux. You know, lumen output of a lamp is what we talked about. For example, all these new lamps have come LED uh, and, and those ones earlier CFL. So, their lumen output efficiency is much higher per watt. Okay. So, I think we will stop here and then come back again.